With wrestling video games, the temptation is to play them like beat-em-ups. You punch your opponent, do your big moves, hit a finisher, and then pin them for the 1-2-3. One, two, three. But ask any pro wrestler, and they'll tell you there's much more to wrestling than just that. So we did. Ask some wrestlers, that is, about the things you need to be doing in the upcoming WWE... What are we up to now? 19. 19. Right, because you always have to look, because it's always a, a, yeah. it's always a year ahead. A year ahead. ahead. But and well, I don't even know what year we're on now, so... 19. Yeah, 19. Thank you, Cesaro. Here are the things you need to be doing to really recreate the authentic WWE experience. Come on, we need to get over here. Corey, how do you think the champ looks heading into this match? She looks like the champ we've become accustomed to seeing, Cole, which clearly spells bad news for her opposition. Wrestling is a complicated sport with a lot of rules. No weapons, no punching the referee, no using supernatural powers unless they're really essential to your gimmick, but every good wrestler knows that occasionally, if you want to get to the top, you have to bend the rules slightly. Here's WWE bad guy Baron Corbin to explain further. <laughs> Cheating is huge. Like, that's a major key for me. Isn't it? You know, it, uh, bringing in weapons, foreign objects. I like to change the rules sometimes when I'm wrestling, you know. Yeah. And I was watching my entrance earlier, and I had a problem because it happened to me. Usually I'm the one that's cheap shotting people, but uh, in the middle of my entrance, Finn Balor came out and beat me up from behind. That yeah. guy. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Baloney. Yeah, I can't yeah. stand it. I don't like him at all. Noted baddie Cesaro is also a fan. It's the, it's the video game, right? So, oh, like, sure, if it sure, would sure. be cheating, it would just disqualify you because it's like essentially there's like an omnipot. What is the word? Omnipotent? Is that the right omnipotence? word? Omnipotence. An omnipotent. Yeah. See, I'm not English. I just have weird <laughs> German accented American English. Um, omnipotent referee, right? Yeah. Because like it's not just the referee that's in the game. It's like a, a AI. Look at me. I have all the words. <laughs> it's like an AI that knows how that was a DQ and that wasn't. So technically, there's no cheating in a video game, is there? Unless you like unplug somebody's controller, right? I mean, if the referee doesn't see it, it's not cheating, right? Exactly, right. And even WWE champion AJ Styles knows that you have to bend the rules sometimes. I think some rules are made to be broken, some are bent, um, and it's not, you, you know, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? Yeah. And then the old saying, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if cheating is such a bad thing sometimes. Just make sure that the referee doesn't see, otherwise you'll be disqualified. Luckily, WWE referees have the deductive reasoning skills and keen eyesight of a stupid mole that's been dead for three weeks, so you should be fine. When beating the hell out of your opponent inside the squared circle, you might be tempted to spread the damage out. You know, evenly apply the smackdown to all parts of your opponent so that they really know they've been in a fight. While this commitment to equal opportunity violence is commendable, it's also dead wrong according to actual pro wrestlers. What you want to be doing instead is isolating and working a body part, as NXT superstar Johnny Gargano explains. So you got to weaken a body part, you got to uh, attack a body part, um, you got to go in the ring with a strategy. And I think when you're playing this game, you got to go in the ring with a strategy. If you're playing as Johnny Gargano, Gargano escape. Like that works over the neck and arm area. So I'd go in and try to do various neck breakers, things mm. like that. Yeah. And according to former tag team champion Cesaro, there are other benefits as well. If you play Street Fighter, you do the freaking low kick all the time, you know, yeah. like low kick, low kick, low kick. It's Spam like the, the most kick. annoying thing ever, you know. Yeah. You just want to hit him with the big roundhouse and the other, just like, oh, oh, oh. So I think maybe that's your strategy. Just, just go for work the your body part. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know, like, the annoying, <laughs> the, the annoying jumping knee that you can't block at any time, you know? Just just find whatever works for you, and I think that's yeah. a, Just do it over and over and over. Yeah, nice body parts, friend. Be a shame if someone were to work them. The Dutch Destroyer might emerge out of the darkness just long enough to knock <laughs> someone's head off. Of course, not all the damage you do to your opponents has to be to their now twisted and shattered limbs. It's just as important to beat up their brain, although now that steel chair shots to the head have been banned, the easiest way to do that is through psychology and mind games. This can range from the ever-popular trash talking all the way up to projecting maggots onto the ring. Thanks, Bray Wyatt. For more advice, we turn to Cesaro for some top psychological advice. 
Yeah, I mean, 100% you have to. That's like, you know, with trash talk or just like however you can, you know, like play video games like that. I don't know, you know, whatever, whatever helps, you know, especially oh. like when uh, all us Europeans, when, when we play FIFA or, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's just, you know, then the trash talk is just on, you know. You can also, you play with your friends and you beat them, but you could beat them easily, but you just kind of beat them closely so you can beat them over and over and <laughs> over again. And then you taunt, you know, you just like slide a little taunt in there and you're like, you do, do a crazy move. You're like, oh, I didn't even know I could do that. You know, if you, like, if you beat him too easily. He won't want to play you again. Exactly. Then, yeah. You know, like, ah, okay. you know, that, that's, that's the thing, you know, for yeah. example, like, I think like, uh, you know, like Mario Tennis, right? Like mm. one of my friends doesn't want to play Mario Tennis because he got just trashed the first time. You know, you yeah. can't do that. You have to be like, oh, I lost. What did I do? You know, and what advice on destroying people's fragile minds would be complete without input from AJ Styles? Well, you know what? Fact of the matter is you got to you got to brush it off. The only problem is, that, listen, you can talk about me all you want. You can, you can talk about how I suck at video games and how I break controllers and stuff like that. But the one thing you can never talk about is the people I love the most. I lose it. I, I go completely off the rails. Thanks, AJ. Remind me not to piss you off in future. You've tried to stop me at every turn, from the indies to NXT to SmackDown, and now here on Raw. Of course, if you're going for maximum psychological devastation, you're going to want to do what is known in the business as cutting a promo. This is the process in which you take a microphone, address the crowd, and list all of your opponent's failings while simultaneously reminding everyone present of how great you are. It's one of the most valuable tools in a wrestler's arsenal, right behind the Topic on Hilo and the Hurricane Runner off the top rope. But don't take my word for it, let's hear from Cesaro. I mean, like, so we play a lot of video games in the locker room and stuff, and there's constant promo cutting going on. Yeah. Especially, like, uh, you know, with, with, like, any kind of fighting or competition game. A lot of promos beforehand, uh, and then, like, it gets a lot of promos during, and then it gets really intense because, you know, you have to focus. Yeah. And then a lot of promo cutting after that. So I think if you play video games, especially with your friends, there mm. needs to be a lot of promo cutting. AJ Styles also knows what's up when it comes to trash talking. A, a promo was just making it personal. Yeah. And bringing out, you know, uh, emotions. That's that's what it's all about. And, with you know, lowering and raising your voice, you know, that's a, that's ingredients to a great promo. Now, listen, I'm no promo guy. Let's be honest. Sure, I can barely sure. speak the English language. <laughs> but uh, I think that anybody can do it. Finally, let's hear from Johnny Gargano, who is so bad at wrestling. You see, I'm really bad at it. Let's hear from the experts. Well, I mean, when it comes to playing games, when you're playing with your friends, yeah, uh, you want to be able to cut a promo on your friend. Like while you're playing? While you're playing the game. Oh, yeah. You're going to say, like, I'm beating you all over this building right now, buddy. And then the next week, you're going to be able to do like that. I just gave you a prototypical, like, prototypical wrestling promo, I guess. That's good. I'm beating you into next week, buddy. I'm going to beat you into next week. That, that's my catchphrase, actually. <laughs> that's on the next Johnny Wrestling shirt. See, the classic. I'm beating you into next week, buddy. Wait, I've got it. More like Johnny God No No. No, no, I thought that was something. Never mind. Being a lone wolf is all well and good, but there's definitely something to be said for being part of a group, or as they're known in wrestling parlance, a stable. There have been countless great wrestling stables throughout the years, from D-Generation X to the Four Horsemen to the Undisputed Era, and being part of a group definitely has its advantages, as Baron Corbin knows only too well. It's great. Yeah, everybody can use a little backup here and there, so especially in a match, um, you know, if you call out three or four guys to beat up one guy, I think you're going to have a better chance of winning. And as AJ Styles points out, if everyone's doing it, you'll have to as well. It's usually off the table for AJ Styles, but if they're going to have help, why shouldn't I? It also probably helps if, like AJ Styles, you're incredibly good at professional wrestling. But hey, you've got to start somewhere. Getting his attention with a vicious strike. Wrestling matches take place inside a ring, which is a confusing name because it's actually square. That said, it's technically legal for wrestlers to go outside and fight outside the ring as long as they return before the referee reaches a count of 10. This is not how you want to see a matchup like this end. So, should you be trying to spend more time outside the ring when playing wrestling games? NXT's Johnny Gargano certainly seems to think so. My body is not going to be... <laughs> not, does not feel advantageous about that at all, actually. Uh, but you can put your, th put your opponent through the announcer's table, which you've done. Sure. You can go up on the stage, throw them into the Titantron. You can go off 
through tables. You can use, rip up the pad, do concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember this morning, so I walked in and I played as myself for the very first time. And of course, I had a match against Shawn Michaels from 1997. Of course. Um, and Shawn Michaels was making his entrance. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let him make his full entrance. So I hit the A button and I ran and I rushed him and I popped him in the in the ramp right there on the ramp right on the ramp took him out on the ramp okay and so taking taking a bump in the ring yes taking a bump on the outside oh where I are, the, where are the pain it, levels it hurts a lot more on the outside it hurts in the twice ring twice as much hurts in three the times ring. as much hurts in the ring but when you go through con go on concrete does not feel good you think like oh maybe concrete feels okay no <laughs> i don't doesn't. think i would ever think yeah, concrete would feel no, okay no doesn't but. feel good cool. going through tables and things like that no it, 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 it hurts as much as you think it hurts. It hurts real bad. And Baron Corbin definitely thinks it has its advantages, and he should know, considering all the people he's beaten up. There's a lot of really hard objects out there, announce tables, barricades. The floor is a lot harder than the ring, so if you slam a guy on the floor, it takes a little more out of him. So, you know, that's a, a big advantage. Just make sure you do eventually get back inside the ring, unless you're doing a backstage brawl, in which case, enjoy what remaining time you and your brain cells have together. From what we've seen and heard tonight, there must be serious injuries. They're on their feet for Johnny Wrestling. The following contest is Jeff Warman Falls making his way to the ring from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny. Finally, it's super important that you don't forget the crowd. I know, I know, you've got a lot to think about with all the cheating and working body parts and going outside the ring and cutting promos that you'll be doing, but working the crowd has much more of an effect on the quality of your match than just giving you a momentum boost, as your boy Johnny Wrestling knows only too well. You gotta taunt, you gotta cheer, and like when you taunt, I mean, prior wrestling games, uh, if you taunt, you build up your finishers. You taunt all day. I remember playing as as uh, Kevin Nash in previous games, and like I try to flick his taunt meter, and like back in the day, his taunt was very very slow. So he'd go like. <laughs> So you try to build that finisher, but as soon as you hit that top button, yeah. you're getting cut off real quick. You got to be real confident. You got time. <laughs> you're like, okay, you got to put the guy down. Okay. Oh man, come on. <laughs> Cesaro also notes the drawbacks of playing to the crowd too much. That's like insult to inch, you know? It's like when you hit the taunt button, you know? Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like a guy's down and like, he's trying to get up, but he's like smashing the buttons and you're just over there like, they're in the bar, you know? It's just, yeah. that's. Are you gonna work on some taunts that are a bit quicker? Because that's always the thing with taunts when you've got like a really long, and you're doing that, and you're in the animation. They get off, and then they hit you while yeah. you're taunting. You've got to think of like some some quicker. Oh, you know, like I think they have a quick taunt. You know, do this just, one, just you know, that. like or like I mean, I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't. I only taunted about I was on the apron because we played a tag match, you know. But yeah. I always feel like you know it's just like a boom, and then you keep going. So like that's a perfect taunt because like you get him now, and you're like hey, there we go, and then you're just like you're ready again, and then bam, and then like you know you hit him and. Show who the bar is. So those are the top tips straight from actual WWE wrestlers about ways that you can play WWE 2K19 more like an actual wrestler. Got any more tips that we missed? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit the bell icon down below to be notified about new videos every time we upload. Thanks for watching. Now for me and Cesaro's famous catchphrase. Yeah, yeah don't set the bar. We are the bar. No, that's okay. You yeah, can do it, you know. That's a, that's a beautiful. We have thumbs on each hand, right? So, woo! Who knew? It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Nailed it.